This is the Absolute Business Mindset podcast, created and hosted by Mark Hayward. This podcast will interview entrepreneurs, business owners, and people in their career. We will delve into their journey to success, key life milestones, and go deep into their area of expertise. This podcast will inspire and educate with great guests. Get ready to learn from others' successes and failures. Today we have something slightly different. We've got Andrew Miller here today and Andrew's got his own podcast, which I'll let him introduce in a minute. And we're going to do a a sort of trial, a sort of a test to have both of us talk about our journeys um, to where we are now. So hello, Andrew. How are you? I'm good, Mark. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting because, yeah, we had that little chat earlier on and it's like we've got such similar backgrounds, similar journeys, but also differences. It's like, well, why? And, we've, and both got the podcast. Why, why don't we just chat? Yeah, absolutely. It's a total experiment. Uh, but that's what it's that's what it's all about, isn't it? You've got to give, give stuff a go. Absolutely. Um, so, so just to give the context, my point of view. My, so my name's uh, as you say, Andrew Miller, and um, I run I'm founder of uh, Business Enjoyment. That's uh, that's what I run. And I've got a uh, podcast called The Tingle Zone. And uh, similar to you, it says, well, where, what are the journeys that people have been through uh, that's led to what they do now? And what's, the, what's the thing that drives them? What's the thing that gives them that buzz and that motivation, gives them that tingle? And that's where the, the tingle zone comes from. And, uh, and, and, and that's, that's what that's about. Um, so so I, I run, so I'm a coach and, and qualified in that space. And um, I, I obviously do the, the, the usual sort of things that coaches do, but I also run a number of uh, discussion groups. I think it's probably the best uh, phrase for them uh, called breathing spaces, which are kind of confidential spaces where people get together and we explore what it actually means to have enjoyment in your business. Uh, then you, you might be familiar with like the peer to peer mastermind groups and group coaching programs. They're a lot more looser and flexible than that. They're, they're a different kind of thing. And uh, one person called them, uh, the AA meeting for business owners because <laughs> <laughs> it's an opportunity just to, uh, you know. So just tell me a little out. bit more about that. So it's the breathing zone. So you give a breathing, your, space, breathing space. Breathing space. Apologies, breathing space. So you give your your, your people that you've invited uh, space. Are, are, are there different types of breathing space? Well, we have. Uh, it's um, it's shifted with the um, the, the lockdown. <laughs> as you could imagine so it used to be physical groups and i used to have one in different geographical areas so i'm based in yorkshire and i used to have one in weatherby one in leeds one in barnsley one in huddersfield one in wakefield etc and uh, it's membership but although other people can dip in and have a look and uh, it's not expensive really cheap but um but i, w- I would literally like the aa sort of thing c- c- circles uh, chairs in a circle and um within a, a, an overarching context i would throw a question in or a thought or a, or, or something within that context within that theme and we just get conversation going and see where it goes and i just facilitate and bring it out um now i've got a thing called the business enjoyment model which there are six different stages and uh, each of those groups works through those different stages and then comes back again but within those different stages you've got all different elements of business and personal development so it's a it's a continual learning process. It's not like a six month program that you do. It's uh, yeah. you know, people keep coming back and I've had people coming for years, you know, it's a, it's a space that come and they've had, you know, they've got their own coaches. They've, some of them are coaches. It's not a come in into my lair and I have got you. It's no, it's a space where people can get different viewpoints, think about things differently in a safe space. And so, so it is, it's like a mastermind in essence. You, you yeah. Mastermind, also- the, 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 the key difference for me, and I went to lots of masterminds to make sure that it was different. Masterminds are really structured in the actual structure of the meeting you know we have one person that's going to be on the hot seat and then everybody goes in turns and you've got 10 you know two minutes to ask as many questions as you've got and then you've got two minutes and then you've got two minutes and you're not allowed to give any opinions and you're not allowed to give any and now we're going to have the and there's a process that every single mastermind group follows and there's value in that i'm not knocking it but that's what that is this is almost the opposite of that it's like who's got something to say bring it in what do you think uh, how about you oh i've got a different opinion and in a good session i can sit back and do absolutely nothing <laughs> <laughs> and everybody but it's bringing it's still bringing that cross-pollination of views and uh whatever but it's much, much more free-flowing and people will bring what they need to bring in and they'll come out with what they need to take out from it rather than there being like one or two people get drilled and no one gets 
yeah, everyone else sort of uh, doesn't get so much. But um, yeah, so yeah, but they're I'd... all and they're and they're all online now. That's the that's the. Oh, okay. Yeah, so so like just all gone, all all gone gone. Calls. we can't meet. We can't meet in hotels. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm rethinking exactly how that's going to look going forward. But, uh, Interesting. Um, so let's just talk about your uh, your early career. So we 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 we, we realised when we were talking that we both. Well, I'd worked in the big four in in two companies in in PwC and KPMG, and I believe you worked in KPMG for a while as well. So just tell me a little bit about your uh, sort of early career and, and, and how you got to where we are now which is coaching and podcasting and various other things it's one of those things you think how, how far do you want me to go back and I can you know I can I can start a story from when I was like four years old and how it built and shaped me and think but we'll, we'll cut out some of that stage if we need to go back there we can uh, let's let's start jumping out of university and um and essentially came out of university this is I'm a bit older than you so this is a uh, mid-90s and uh, that was that was a couple of recessions ago <laughs> yeah. and uh, came out I was uh, well qualified uh, first class master degree I'd spent a year in France so I was fluent in French and uh, came out thinking right okay who wants me <laughs> silence and tumbleweed drifted across <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah as I say recruitment was, it was difficult in those days there weren't many jobs and I, I just drifted effectively and the part of the problem was I didn't know what I wanted to do yeah and, and you know I think this is part of the the um, educational system is that you you just go on to the next level the next level next level and and I, I did be I did O levels huh? um and, and GCSEs and you just say well I, I'm good at these so I'll do those A levels well, I'm good at that I'll do that at university all right let's keep going King. right what am I doing now don't know um so yeah so I drifted and um basically by somehow my cv drifting across someone's desk i got an interview i got called out by an agency to uh, go and have an interview with kpmg in their receiverships department wow. and i didn't know who kpmg were and i didn't know what a receivership was <laughs> so that's a good starting point for an interview um i turned up for the interview 15 minutes late because it was in Milton Keynes and anyone that's been to Milton Keynes know how easy it is to get lost and I got lost in Milton Keynes right. uh, but by a number of pure coincidences uh, they felt that, that it was their fault for not giving me clear enough directions I'd come in the wrong door they basically they ended up apologizing to me <laughs> <laughs> which is a great start to so I turned up late they were apologizing to me the it looked like the um no one had actually looked at my cv before <laughs> they, oh, yeah. right so what is it you do and uh, the second interview which i got was held down the pub oh. <laughs> uh and the hardest question i had to answer was what do you want to drink and I, thought, <laughs> I can cope with this <laughs> um but it was in the world of insolvency and right. and companies going so i i did train to become an accountant but um uh, it, it, the core job is essentially when a company goes bust and where there's a lot of that going on at the moment as we're, we're familiar with and has been seeing some big names uh, basically we take ownership of it we take control of it and it's real hands-on ownership you don't just sit in the boardroom and make some strategic decisions you're there in the mix of it and you're counting stock and you're arguing with customers and creditors and suppliers and it's a really interesting area because um I, I had some some sort of exposure to it so i was global mobility that was my area i was global mobility tax um but a couple of people in the 0809 credit crunch moved to insolvency and administration because of lehman brothers mm. so uh pwc uh took on lehman brothers as uh, as a client after they went uh, into administration and it actually took four years to break up the company and get things in in the right space and the right place to actually then be able to sell it off and and pay off the debtors and and the creditors so it was just it was fascinating that it actually took as long as that. Mm. I, I, I was surprised because the, the, because they were saying that we need to get the company in the right shape in the, what, how do we break it up? And, and so um, it was incredibly fascinating to, to hear stories of, of how they basically spent years in the Lehman brothers offices while they were breaking up the company, which I think is a, an incredibly um, 
uh, it must be quite an intense. Did you have any large sort of or because yeah, you, you you weren't based in London, were you? You were you, you've always been based outside of London. I was Milton Keynes originally, and yeah. we were twinned with St Albans, so we were doing a lot of work there. And oh. spent a couple of years in Australia, and then when I came back, went to to Leeds. Um, but I did do I was in some comment in London for a little bit, so I did a few London based jobs. So. In terms of big names, probably the biggest company I was involved with was Courts, if you remember the furniture store. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, that, that involved with that one. Um, I was on the peripheral of things like Leeds United and and it was another company which will be forgotten now, but it was, they used to be the major manufacturer of the barber jackets, you know, the oh, wax yeah. barber jackets yeah. called Dun & Co. Uh, Chiris Terrio took them over and then they went bust and, and whatever. But um, it, the... The big names are normally a lot less interesting jobs. Yes, I would agree. I would agree. <laughs> because you, they, they're so, I mean, like courts, for example, you had the UK courts and then you had the overseas courts and they're all intertwined and connected, but also there's a separate business going on. And as you say, it was just so slow and painful where you've got one bit where you're trying to sort of manage the what sofas you can get out and that kind of thing, but also having a one eye on the overseas transactions and the legalities of how you separate those separate companies. You know, so much going on, you end up becoming a little cog in a wheel. The fun jobs were the ones that you'll never have heard of, but will be a you know bread manufacturing plant. We did rock cakes, we did um, uh, pet foods, we did uh, a fashion designer, timber mills. You know, you just, you, it's a factory, you're in charge of it, go. <laughs> yeah, so, so from, my, from my point of view, the larger clients were always um, less, less fun because um, it was so process driven. So there were, you, it was like, Mark, you do that, Jack, you do that, Paul, you do that. And you were given sort of designation when you like, of what the process you needed to look after. The smaller clients, you started to get involved in in everything mm, on all absolutely. aspects of it, and uh, and for me, sometimes like obviously, as a, a, a as, as a sort of younger person, like a junior, you you need a sort of big client to to sort of hang your hat on, in the sense of you need you need someone to 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 earn with, with financials, you need something to earn a, a big amount, but. It was nice at PwC. They actually gave me a little bit of a mixture as well, and they did give me those smaller clients where it was just basically me and maybe a senior manager on while I was a junior, and it was really good because you could see all aspects of the billing, of the risk management, of the of the the, the tax return, of the, the mobility, the software. Because I ended up going into software, um, and, uh, and my, exp my my main uh, sort of experience as, as a sort of consultant was was in selling and implementing software all within global mobility um but it was it was really a fascinating the software area was really fascinating because it kind of went against like, almost counterculture of of an accountancy firm so um we, we still needed to do uh, time sheets because it was an old accountancy view that you you basically charge per hour on what you do um where where in the software you, you don't do that you don't do consultancy in the same way you're implementing software you're you're resolving issues with the horizon but that's all part of the license fee that they get for a year's worth of service on that piece of software so um it, it always felt for me uh, working in the software area um, a little bit different and a little bit sometimes if you had someone really uh, invested in you um, in your business um, you could get so you could get a real traction and and get some 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 really interesting sort of uh, projects but we've in in the sort of what about eight years six seven eight years of working in the software area it really was a mix because sometimes it was it was a very enjoyable experience and then sometimes you were quite ostracized and quite separated from the main part of the global mobility team that the people were doing tax returns or p11ds or uh, or the uh, from the pure tax perspective um um and so for me, I really enjoyed it. I, I, I've got a fascination with software and with technology, so I enjoyed were you, it. Were you into software and technology before you joined the thing? No, in, interestingly, not, interestingly not, not really. It was only, um, I was do, doing the global mobility piece and uh, 
and I had a a, a, um, a really good line manager. She was she she was amazing, like someone who really cared. And and I would say if you're in a in a big four or or in a large corporation, you can have a very very excellent line manager, but you can also have a lot of crap as well. Oh yeah, uh, and and it's it's one of those things that I would say if you're listening to this, I would fight for a really good line manager and i would say like if you're struggling with that then you you should take it as it's your responsibility to get a good line manager but anyway so she 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 was introducing she introduced me to 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 the partner looking into the who's looking after the 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 global mobility software and we just started chatting and we kind of had an interview but it wasn't it was just over coffee and uh he said what I wanted to do. And I was quite ambitious at the time, wanted to move up the grades and, and, uh, and he definitely uh, gave me some left field uh, questions. Um, I'm trying to think if I can remember any, any of them, but they were, um, he, he was trying to make me a little bit more outside my comfort zone. He thought that was where I needed to start at least, which, which is, which is good. I, uh, and um and we got on very well. And as I said, we had we, we had a coffee and then I met his boss and we then went for a coffee a, a, again. And uh, and uh, and to be honest, it was it was the best bit of my big four journey was working in that software team um, for eight years. And uh, and I really enjoyed it. I was able to specialize um in in sort of two areas one was um uh equity equity calculations uh for people that have been given equity by the corporations and sort of what was very very hot uh and probably is still, we're less so now because of covid but it's business travel and okay. working with teams who yeah. were who were traveling all the time um and so yeah from a journey point of view it was it was a sort of indirect way of getting into software and now i sort of my, my coaching i work not primarily but sort of edge towards people who want to build software companies um and want to do the startup on software not necessarily I, i'm not a big one my coaching is based upon building a sustainable and successful business and that doesn't mean that you take on lots of debt and lots of equity for your business I would prefer my 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 clients to start with a minimal viable product as a small section and, and get that working. And then when you're thinking about scaling, then that's where you might give up equity. But you don't want to give up equity yeah. to your business too soon. So I'm I'm very careful with that. And people people see the idea of the sort of Facebook um sort of model and yeah that kind of uh, kind of it does work in silicon valley but it doesn't necessarily work everywhere else and i would prefer people to take a little bit longer and still get there but just take a little bit longer on getting the grounding on the business first and get a business model because let's be honest for a long time facebook didn't even have a business model of how to make money it just they just knew it was a good idea um and what I try and bring on to my, my clients is that you need to think about your sales and marketing. You need to think about your strategy for your business. Where do you, where, where is the money making part of your business and, and build that. Um, so that's incredibly important. For I mean, the, 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 what, what comes up for me there, and it will probably reflect something we get to later on, but the, it's the danger of, the phrase we often hear in coaching and or any sort of business sort of development about success leaves footprints and there's this big onus look at people who've been successful and follow them and i get that I, i'm not dismissing that as a thing but mm. it also can lead you down traps so as you just said there with facebook for example and and amazon similar and whatever you know the, 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 there's all these models that did not make money for ages a huge yeah. amount of risk yeah, and they needed the whatever support they needed to do to get there, and that and the results came much later on. Yeah, that is not something that you would necessarily put down as your opening gambit on how you're going <laughs> to create your yeah. business model. You know, it's not necessarily something to follow. You can pick some bits out, but it's dangerous to actually follow some because there'll be just as many people have done exactly the same model and crashed and burnt and 
Oh, and I think I think outside of Silicon Valley, that it's, it's been a massive failure for a lot of businesses. I would actually just take you just just maybe correct uh, slightly on Amazon. Amazon's slightly different because Amazon started as a book store online, mm -hmm. and he niched very very uh, early on to to, to bookstore. And, and also he, uh, I'm sure they did have VC money. I'm sure they did have venture capital money that went into it, but he, he for a long time took very little money as a salary and invested everything back into his business, into the infrastructure, into the expanding from books to, to well, basically everything now that, that Amazon now supplies. Yeah. So, and the point I was making was that, you know, Amazon made no money at all for years. That, oh, true. That, that true. was the, was the yeah. bit of that that I was meaning, not the, the actual detail, but to take your point. Um, but, you know, Facebook, Amazon, Google even, for years, no money, no money, no money, no money, no money. Yeah. And yet they were valued as a bit of that huge amounts on the stock exchange. And now people know why. But at the time it was like, but you're making a loss every year. Huge yeah. loss. <laughs> yeah. Well, this uh, is the thing. Like, I would never suggest people take those sorts of gambles, take those sorts of risks. Um, because, I, I, like, the people who I'm working with, um, as they, they are entrepreneurs or budding entrepreneurs who have a side hustle that they want to build into a business and whether it's either uh, a full-time business that they in, embed themselves in or whether it's always going to be a sort of side hustle until it gets to a certain size um, people I work with are just trying to you know, it's just set like what I work them through is the seven stages which is essentially from the setup um, to their dream team, to the people they need to, to make it work. And then there's early market research. And then you go into the sort of the launch phase. And then you go into um, sales and marketing again and tweaking what you've done and, and, and understanding where you go. And then you, you hopefully, after going through these seven stages, you've got at the end a business which is making a bit of money. And whether it's it, – because uh, it's it, – I work within different areas, I do different industries, not exclusively software, but um, sort of my sort of specialism, I suppose, is, is software. And um, and it's really important for people to get the bedrocks, the, 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 the building blocks of business in place, whether it's a compliance thing like setting up your business and making sure you do it on company's house and, and your business accounts to actually the side of the launch and, and how you launch a business. And do you do large fanfares? Do you do um, a more beta tester and you just get some tests some clients who test for you and you can build the software that way um and and i would never uh we, we were actually talking to with, with one of my clients and, and and he was saying like well who are the the people if i was wanting to employ let's just say money's no object i employed five people now who would i employ and uh, I thought it was a really interesting question because at an early stage, when if you've got a little bit of money and you're thinking, oh, who do I employ? I was saying, I was saying to him, like, you want generalists, you want people who can sort of do a little bit of sales and marketing, a little bit of finance, a little like they cover multiple roles because it's not until you scale a business and people are designated very defined roles do you ever get to that point. Mm. You want people to be a little bit of this and a little bit of that, um, or outsource outsourced to philippines india wherever um was the other option that i gave him and um and i think it's an interesting one because if i was sort of from the sort of um mark zuckerberg rule of thumb i would be saying look go out get bench capital money or seed investment bring in uh, hundreds of thousands of pounds build your company employ people but i i, I think that's irresponsible um I think it's it's a it, it is a business model to, to that, that can work. Obviously, has worked, but I think it also depends very much on the type of business mm. that it is that you're working with, and, that, and that's the key thing: type of business and the type of person. So it's it's very much horses for courses. So you know these these successes that we've seen are at the extreme. You got you got maybe an element of luck but the type of person the type of thing they've got it's it's taken a while in some cases to face it to find out what it e even is yes. <laughs> like still trying to work yes. out what it is in many ways uh underneath it all and um but you know the the these are the anomalies now that doesn't stop somebody wanting to go for that if they want to if that route works for them and mm. they've got the backing and you know if you've got if you've got someone that is prepared to put money into your business and you're happy with the deal and they are they're aware of the risk and you and everyone's 
you know aware of all the all the upsides and downsides and they want to go with it you go with it that's fine i mean i wouldn't say no to, to stop anybody if as long as they felt that that was the right thing to do but it's when people look at these things and saying that's the way i have to do it yeah and there is no there is no have to do about anything have it, you read the um the book about netflix about the owner the the, the person starting it's, it's called something what's it called um it's mark uh, let me just get this because it is I, I read it relatively recently and um and it's really fascinating because um that will never work by mark randolph and um and, and him and uh and and his co-owner uh set up netflix and it was really interesting hearing him talk about the early set of the business where there were there was your core five or six people and and essentially a Netflix origi- originally was um, mail order uh, DVDs. I remember it. I remember it. Yeah. You'd, 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 I was looking at it and think, what? So I, I've got to decide what film I want in a week's time. I need to send off for that film, get it, and then read. And it comes with a post. And what happens? How did what? Do I post it back? And I never <laughs> used it, but it was it was. I remember it. Yeah. So, so what was really interesting was he he was very he was very influential. This Mark Randolph was really influential at the early stages of the business, and he became CEO. And there was another guy who part of the story, which names escaping me, who came in, brought in as chairman and sort of running the operational side. And and it, what was really fascinating was the company grew bigger than what the narrator Mark Randolph could actually implement he he was an ideas man he was he was there to bring up the new innovation for the for the business when actually it got to a point once we started being streaming and and away from the 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 dvds it needed processes and it needed to build a, a, a company which were hundreds if not thousands of people uh it part of their business and he wasn't very good at that he and 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 he took a step away after it went to ipo um, he took six months to basically remove himself from the business. And actually what was really nice was at the end of the story, he's like, and I've now gone and set up other businesses or worked with people who have set up other businesses. What I enjoy is the early doors, the early stages of the business. Mm. The processes of a big business is no interest to me. I'm not very good at it. I don't like doing it. And it was really fascinating because for me, that that was ultimate sort of self reflection and and sort of understand emotional intelligence about yourself to realize that actually something that you created with an idea with you and your business partner, you actually have to take a step away because it's not right for you, for for him. And I I, I think <clears throat> I I very much sort of. Can, can relate to that because the early stages of businesses are really exciting they're really you, you you're you're firefighting you're dealing with issues you're you're trying to get new clients it's it's this whole melee of of sort of different interests and different exciting things that are coming and i actually really enjoy that and that's why i the majority of people that i coach um i do coach other people with who are in careers but um that's why my coaching program, which I'm funneling a lot of time and any effort into, is basically for early early stage investors because mm-hmm. that's that is what is really exciting working out those sorts of issues and problems as you go along. It's interesting because I um I, I pick them up at a different stage. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I go with people who, who have been in business for a while and kind of have lost that buzz and lost that sort of excitement and and have forgotten why they got into it in the first place right and that's the whole sort of concept well, one of the concepts around business enjoyment you know it, 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 it can easily slip into becoming a bit of a job or you doing the thing you love but all the other stuff gets around you and, and it's like hang on we should be enjoying what we do that's that's the prime objective for a small business yes you've got to make some money i totally get that and solely practitioner here the money is <laughs> base level importance big tech yeah. not against money in any way shape or form but we've got to remember all the other bits that need to come with it and they get lost easily get lost along the way now if you can get it instilled and clear at the beginning brilliant <laughs> well it's <laughs> we interesting because because sure. the biggest thing for me is and and what i'm conscious of my life is not making my entrepreneurial endeavors my businesses into a job 
Yes. I, like that, that just isn't what I want to be doing at mm-hmm. the moment. Like if I was, if I was building a business that went to, that you're hiring hundreds of people rather than a few people, I would be, well, it would be a different technique, a different, different skill set. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm enjoying a, the freedom or the additional freedom that I have. And therefore I would be really resentful of a business of mine that I would have to long-term have to turn into a job. That isn't where I want to be at the moment. Mm. Um, and maybe that's a little bit because I want to be self-employed rather than owning a big business. And, and I've, it's interesting since I've given up my job, I've sort of set up uh, three businesses um, and, and, and this is why I think I, I'm good at the coaching side of early stage entrepreneurs is because that's, that's what I've done and that's what I've been through. And I understand the, the pressures, the, 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 the pressures of family, the pressures of um, the job the, or the career or the business. And so um, I think it's important people have fun. And you were saying that like, like enjoying what they do is super important to 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 business, especially if it's your own business you mm. want to and do you advise people to step away from their business to 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 let the next generation or or employ people to take over the business yeah I, well yeah. careful my language here <laughs> i mean i do float around between i i'll, I'll I'll move away less from advice, just more towards the coaching, maybe, because it's going to be right. different for each individual kind of thing. Yeah, um, sure. um, but that doesn't stop me at times saying things. But <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll skirt around coaching, mentoring, consulting, whatever needed at the time to a certain extent. But, right. but the, 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 the truth is there's no, there's no hard and fast rules, as I said before, so it, it will depend on the individual. Um, the, you know, I, I, I buy into the things that we you, you're sort of inferring and then there's plenty of books about it and what I believe for myself is if you get it right then it's as you say it's not a job it's it's just part of your way of life kind of thing so from my point of view when I left KPMG uh, I consider that the point that what I retired so I have retired Okay. And then now doing what I want to do in my retirement. So right. I'm not thinking of a point where well, this is a point where it's going to stop. It stopped pretty much when I'm in the ground, you know, that's <laughs> because it's it's part of who I am. And if you can get to that point, you it's it's you don't step away. You can reduce it. You man, you got to look after yourself. Um, and but you know, but but then there's other people where it's like, yeah, absolutely, it is going to uh, uh, stop. It's got to stop a point. But you can only do it so far. So what's next? What, what happens after that? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if, if if you sell your business, if you win the lottery, if you do all these sort of things, right? Okay, you you, you do your world tours and you yeah. read all the books and all, whatever you want to do. Got all the time in the world, you're gonna get bored. Yeah. So you're gonna have to create something. So why don't we look at that? <laughs> and why doesn't that? Why don't you start doing that now? Well, just just on that, just uh, just to slightly take us off of business because. I think it's an important thing that that doesn't often come up so health wise so from for I, I, I don't i have no idea about your 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 health history at all but interestingly you said said something about like when you you might want to step away because of age or or or, or whatever do you do you find health is a factor for your decision making with your businesses it's got to be it's got to be it's part of it so you know, my my business enjoyment model is essentially based around Maslow. If you're familiar with Maslow's hierarchy, yeah. And at the base level, it's it's feeling safe. That's one of the themes that we'll have in the breath in the breathing spaces. And and it's, you know, okay. now within that, there's a number of different things. There is making sure you've got enough money to pay the bills. Yeah. Again, insolvency practitioner, it's really important. You got to take that worry away. But then there's also your physical health and your mental health. These are all parts of feeling safe. If you don't have those grounding things in place, or, or, or then you're gonna everything else falls by the wayside. Yeah. Um, so physical health, mental health. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean I'm, a, I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a PT, whatever. But <laughs> we kind of know where we are. Yeah. And um, and if we're not where we want to be, let's do something about it. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one because like cause I. 
<clears throat> I've been I've been going to the gym for probably about four years and and I flip between going like three four times a week to sometimes no times a week um and um and I always think to myself uh that I would once I once I quit my job that I would have this this freedom to be able to go for a run when I wanted or go to the gym or walk the dog or uh, be be active be be um be open to that and 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 to be honest doing all right on it if I'm honest I like there's there's some times where I've just gone right I'm gonna go and take the dog for an hour's walk whatever happens I'll have my phone on me so if the world does explode I I I'll know that it's exploded but I kind of think it's it's I I I I want to be make sure that I'm more active and and the 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 scourge of of my generation is sitting in front of computer screens for hours upon hours upon hours and 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 not may not moving um enough and I, I've got something on my watch which tells me every hour or so that I don't move it, it gives me a buzz and says you should be standing up or walking about <clears throat> so but I I always think that health is something that a lot of people don't prioritize in business and mm -hmm. and the sort of hustle and grind i've got to be at my desk 14 hours a day 15 hours a day i've got to grind and hustle and i'll eat pizza and and i'll do you know what I mean like it's just it's this sort of american very american styles like okay. and, a and, and i will say there's a touch of toxic masculinity in there as well yes and um yes. I, I, i've I suspect Big Four is probably at one side of the spectrum on that. So, I mean, I don't know what your experiences are, but, you know, it would be the kind of thing, certainly my um, experiences across the board, you know, there, there are some times you're doing some long, long hours, you know, yeah. working through the night and all this kind of thing. Yeah. And, you know, it was a bit of a, a badge of honour that you'd work through the night, you get the pizzas in, you work hard, oh, come on, guide. then you go out and have a few drinks afterwards. It's very boise kind of man sort of whatever and you know if you then brought in a leafy salad and had a tonic water and and all that kind of stuff it was uh, whatever now i think times have changed times have changed so much since i was back then i mean you've got to remember i'm 10 years out of out of the company and, and it was probably 20 30 years ago that sort of thing so i'm talking a kind of a yesteryear so so, so i think we are now living in a uh, a time where it's much more acceptable to have the conversations whereas actually now i am gonna I'm being sensible about what I eat. I'm mental health. Uh, mental health is now, uh, you know, high up on the topic of conversations in any environment, yeah. particularly what's been happening with lockdown and that kind of stuff. So it's it's still not there yet, but it's the, the doors are open for people to have those conversations a lot more easily now than you know than you know, 15 years ago. Yeah. So what what we did when I was working from home with with my with KPMG was we would have daily calls, and that actually moved from daily calls to three days a week to two days a week, and it would just be half an hour at four o'clock, and we would all of us in the team, um, in the immediate team, so it was probably about 14, 15, 16 of us would jump on a call, and sometimes it was very work focus sometimes it was just a chat and just sort of sort of water cooler sort of conversation of how things are going and I did think that was well designed and well planned because that there, there were a lot a lot there were some people that were very very isolated and they were living on their own and were not able to go out there were people that were shielding because of family members there was uh people who were in um jobs uh, were, were in uh, joint houses and they literally lived with their housemate and they that was it and 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 I think it was well well planned that that they brought that in as a as a thing for people to have that space to be able to have those conversations and I would imagine even when I started so I started at uh in the big four probably i think it was 2007 2006 2007 something like that and even then pre credit crunch it was still quite boisey and it was still quite um um as you say like the badge of honor that you work till midnight and 
you you have your pizzas brought in and you 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 they they used to do then I don't know if they even do that now but if you worked after a certain period you could get a cab home and it would be you could you could finance it to the to the company I don't know if that still happens now um but yeah it was it, there was definitely that in in 6 7 8 uh, 2006 7 and 8 but I would say in the last sort of three or four years, mental health has become a major issue, mm. um, as you've discussed, and sort of physical health has, has, has sort of reprioritized itself. But there still is an expectation of long hours. Mm. I I think, I like you say, sort of nine till five. I was... At KPMG, not so much. I was able to manage my time a little bit better, but... In, in in PwC, I was working with the Indian team in the morning, and then I was working with West Coast US on a client. Uh, so I was I was covering like three time zones, so sort of Europe, India, and 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 the US as well. And that was that was pretty difficult. That was pretty difficult to hit all those different time zones. Um, and there was a see, I, I'm so. I believe that you have to work hard at certain times. You you don't want to burn out, but you do need to understand that at times in your life, you're going to have to work your ass off to, to get where you want to be. And I think people who don't believe that are missing a trick. I don't want to be outworked by anyone, um, but equally I work smart and I am efficient and productive and, and, and little techniques that I use to, to make myself efficient and, and productive are, are, are very important to me. But equally, if I need to work, if I need to do something in the evening, then I'll work straight through the evening, even now, um, um, because I think you still need to, like this, you still need to work hard at certain peak periods. I think this is, you know, we, we, again, broadening that out into a, a, a wider concept, there's what you've, within that is is the in many ways the secret or of life <laughs> if you like or one, of the, the secret, secret, one of the one of the Have secrets I? of life Did you I know? stumble upon it I Maybe not the I one of because <laughs> there's many but people again we've touched it before but people keep thinking that it's it's either this way or that way it's black or white it's 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 a or b it's left or right or whatever and the truth is everything is in the middle mm. And, and, and life is a, is a contradiction all the way through because you will, so talking to your point is what you will, you will have the people that moan about, oh, kids today, they've got no grit, they've got no drive, drive you've got to, mm, you know, got to go for it. Uh, and you and it's absolutely right. There are times when you have just got to put that foot down, stick the proverbial nose to the grindstone and get on with it. You've got to have that resilience. You've got to have that, you know, grit to keep going and all the rest of it the trouble is is when you just have that yes when you just have that then there's no respite so there's a flip side where you've got another point where you've got to say whoa <laughs> slow down yeah take it easy forgive you know let yourself off the hook a little bit <laughs> and and have the time away and it's and it and each individual's got to find what works and when you get really connected to, you know, that I think, you know, what both of us do is try and work with our people to to find the thing that really gets them excited and passionate and all the rest of it. And it then becomes a danger that you get you overwork hmm. because you're so excited about it. So it feels great, but actually you, you, you're at risk of damaging yourself. So every now and again, you need someone to, OK, time to have that time out and break and give yourself a spa treatment or whatever it needs to be. Um, and then the flip side is the toxic side of it, of the um, tolerating putting up with stuff uh, i'm not happy but i know i've got to keep going because i've been told i've got to keep going and then you're in real danger danger because you're forcing yourself into a space uh, which isn't doing you any favors so in every situation when uh, whatever it is if someone says what's the answer it is it depends <laughs> absolutely depends there are some times you need a and there's other times you need b and it's an art form trying to find what you need at what times and it's down to each individual yeah and i also think it's um as you say you do need to understand when you're starting to feel a bit frazzled and and you need to take that step away and that might be as you say a weekend away it might be a 
um, an evening out with the the wife or girlfriend or whoever and uh, and giving yourself space because one of the things for me that I think people don't do enough is reflect upon what how they're getting on as a sort of um, self-development sort of point of view because um you it's important to have emotional awareness for other people, but equally it's, it's important that you have emotional awareness and the intelligence of yourself and where you are in that sort of cycle or in that grade. And, and, and I think it's important that people do take that step away and, and, and you're going to just damage yourself. You're just going to hurt yourself if you keep on grinding until you, you frazzle or even worse, something physical like a, a heart attack or something like that. If you, you, you've worked too hard for too long. So, um, so I think it's really important that people have that awareness of taking the, the accelerator off and sort of stopping and just, mm. and, and, and one of the things that was nice that you said was give people a break, give yourself a break, because that's actually something I don't do very well. I don't celebrate my small wins. And it's something that I'm trying to consciously um, do more of because I don't believe there's an end goal to all of this, especially in entrepreneurship, there's Absolutely. no end goal. Um, and therefore you can just keep on going, 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 going. So, so I, for, for me, I'm trying to sort of, when, when something positive happens or I complete something or I've done something that I, that's, that's added value is to just recognize that. And that might be a, a glass of wine with the wife or, or whatever it is. And just sort of have that shared moment of a, appreciating yourself because i think so many people in business as i say just keep on grinding and keep on going and they never take those small wins mm. and enjoy them and enjoy them and i and i and, and i'd add to that and 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 throw another thing in and the thing is is a yes celebrate your successes b celebrate your failures yes because coming into that sense of reflection as you're talking about when you look back and say well that went wrong <laughs> yeah. Yeah. great you can learn from that Absolutely. because we learn from the failures as much as we do from the successes so yeah. as long as you can take that learning forward then it's a win but we, we again we can fall into that trap of perfectionism and 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 everything has to be right and oh my god i got it wrong and oh uh, and we're not beating ourselves up so flip it around actually what is a learning from that great I've learned something new today. I can put that forward going forward. My life will be better forevermore because of what I've learned. What's what's the last thing that you learn? Ooh. The last thing that I learned. Well, we can go micro. <laughs> I mean, the the the. the a lot of things I mean, I, I've learned about you. I've learned from some of your story. I've learned uh, the, the story of the guy from Netflix. Um, in terms of learned for myself, in terms of um, which is really, really where your question is directed. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's a bit cliche to say it happens all the time, so it's hard to pick on one. So I will think of one that that is apparent. But when I hold the, and you'll notice, you know this from coaching and, and, and whatever, is that you're helping somebody, but you learn at the same time as you go through the process. Yeah. And we had a discussion in one of our groups and there was somebody who was in a particular um, space where they needed to have all of these qualifications and it was a very regulated industry, effectively. I don't want to sort of go into too much detail in case they'll probably know who they are anyway. But um, and and with that, the insurance and, and there's a lot of cost involved in it. And actually, the, the point where they were kind of, I don't need to do this anymore. I'm I'm, I'm actually okay. On and and you know, they have to do all the CPD and you know the extra studies and the jump through hoops and all this sort of stuff at a stage where they really didn't need to be doing it. They were experienced. They knew it. They were good at what they did. You know, and that was the real experience. And we had a conversation about, well, do you actually need it? Well, yes, yes, but only if I want to work with these people. Well, do you really want to work with them? Actually, I don't know. I mean, our conversation about with a, in a group whether it was absolutely necessary or not, and just reflect on it. And then afterwards, I sat and thought about it, and I thought, 
right we're coming up to the end of the year come january my uh my renewal for the acca will come up right why the hell have i still got that <laughs> 10 years i've been out of kpmg yeah. now i'm not going back into accountancy <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? I, I knew that at the time. It's never changed. It's not. It's not something I need in the back line. And I thought, why am I paying two to three hundred pounds a year for the privilege of having to come up for a reason, doing CPD and filling in their forms every year? That's all I use it for. I don't right. use. I don't even use the letters after my name. <laughs> and so, so this is realization. So it's like, yeah. So I've resigned. <laughs> well done. Sent an email saying, um. Can I step out? And I said, oh, shame, but yeah, away you go. By the way, if you want to join me again, just pay your subs. Okay, so it was no barrier to leave anyway. Um, but that's the sort of thing is you, you're learning all the time. Yeah, and for me, um, so I think I, my sort of angle for the, for the question was, so, so I've gone through different uh, training as a coach. I'm, I'm currently going through a, a, a training to so I, I've got properties as well um, and I'm going through a, a training program at the moment of um, of a different property strategy um, essentially being able to package deals for other people is essentially what the, the the training is and and for me I became this is probably yeah, I don't know, like probably about six years ago, five, six years ago, I got an obsession by sort of uh, self-development and sort of mm -hmm. learning and building knowledge. And, and I sort of pride myself on that I'm learning maybe two things a year that are substantial step forwards in one area or another. And uh, and it's something that I challenge myself to do every, every, every year um, because I think we as a as a as a person i want to feel like i'm moving forwards with skill sets and 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 yes it could be a it could be a, a very structured mba um, i'm not going to do an mba but it could be something as structured as an mba or it could be something like what i'm doing with this deal sourcing is it's a it's a, a four modules of three hours each so it's quite intensive um, of, of what they're actually teaching you and uh, and for me that's important to, so I actually had booked so I've done I've done I've arranged that and I'm now going through that I actually had arranged to go to two uh, seminars this year which obviously have been um, cancelled because of covid and for me, it's important to put a little bit of money aside every year mm. to try and build my my skill sets and, and knowledge. And, and 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 even if uh, even if this deal packaging doesn't actually come into actually I set up a business to deal package, there'll be things that I will have learned on that course, which will help me with my buy to lets, my, my single lets that I've got um, that I'm buying at the moment. So so for me, it's it's a wider thing of sort of self-development, sort of self-learning, self-educating yourself. Um, and do, do, do you, because you're- Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, um, well, starting tomorrow, I'm on a three-day uh, course to use speaking as a way of um, yeah. getting out there and getting the message out and creating something on the back of it and and and, and, and using speaking as a strategy so that's a three-day course next week i'm currently uh or well, since may i've been on a program to um create a specific product for a specific audience um with, and, a, and a specific course with, and, and a way of doing that which is ongoing um principally at the top end of my I mean, just I'll just speak to it because I haven't actually touched on it, but um, just uh, my explain my journey a little bit more. When, when I left KPMG, uh, having realised I wasn't enjoying work anymore <laughs> and exploring what I did want to do, when I first stepped into the space uh, of coaching, it was it wasn't business enjoyment. That's come much later, um, but it was very much specifically focused on helping people who are going through insolvency deal with the emotional stress that that creates. Right. Right. Um, there's still a huge amount of stigma attached to insolvency. Um, 
both externally and self-generated and the average person that goes bust is basically someone who's well-meaning well-intended doing the best that they can yes you've got your crook yes you've got you idiots but most people are sensible people and it can absolutely destroy them so that's that's where i first started that's what my first book was about i started speaking to government about it all this stuff in that space uh, and it just was and, and did a load of stuff in there but it, it, it for me it wasn't moving as much as it would do because it was at the time whatever so i started shifting and working with other people working with the people in other sort of situations and this is when the learning came it's like well i've been working with the people who've lost everything you can understand why they're not in a great place yeah and then you start speaking to people who've got businesses are doing kind of doing okay and then they're not enjoying life either and this is where it's like well what's what's you know what's the point of it and the point is is at the other end of it you've got millionaires you know, people, business is absolutely sorted, no problem whatsoever. And I have met them and interviewed and they're being treated for stress, anxiety, depression, even despite yeah. the fact that everything's working. And it's like, clearly the model's wrong. And that's you yeah. know, where it comes from. And everything I've been doing over the last few years has been sort of focused in that middle bit of your standard average, small size business. Let's yeah. just make sure we're getting the right tracks in place. And I've never actually targeted the top end. Okay. <laughs> I've never, it's always been sort of loosely there, but I've never actually said, hang on a sec, you know what you're doing. Yeah. Let's really get you connected with something that's really important. Yeah. And take all those skills and all those ability and put it into something that means something to you rather than, you know, getting stressed and worked up about stuff that doesn't mean anything to you. Um, and that's the program that we're creating at the moment and, um, and developing. So, um, and obviously, higher end higher end uh ticket than the the other things that i'm doing and and but the money will go back in to reinvest and and drive and build the other stuff so so how do you sort of structure your 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 finances for um uh for your lifestyle for your uh, I, 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 I only ask is that um, I'm working with a business partner. We're, we're actually setting up a, a podcast agency mm. where we are having guests um, um, join our company and they have either 24 interviews in a year or 48 interviews in a year. And we will set you set those interviews up um and um and i'm working with him and and, and he was we just this was this was a little while ago we so he went live about two weeks ago about a week ago two weeks ago um and uh and i was talking to him about um business and he's a he's a very successful businessman he's he's got two other businesses which are hugely successful he's just building this with me and he's actually building a, a coaching practice as well um and, and he said to me because he uses a, a Ramit Sethi. Have you read Ramit Sethi's book about personal finance? Essentially, it's it's kind of like you set up a business, set up an asset that generates income, which then pays for something. So it's either paying for your house or your car or your lifestyle or <clears throat> or whatever it is. And um, and so I was talking to him about this, and we we're getting to know each other before we went into business and just sort of. And, and then we both sort of bonded over this. And, and, and I think this is one of the hardest things for entrepreneurs sometimes is um, as a business owner or as an entrepreneur, your, your earnings are, are spike right. some months, drop off some other months. You've got to, you've got to juggle money around to pay the, 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 the food, the lifestyle, the car, the house, whatever it is. How do you sort of structure your, mm. your sort of finances? I would recommend people reading two books or looking up two things and I'd sort of do a mishmash between them. I don't follow them explicitly, but not far off. Um, one of them is Profit First, if you've read that book um, and do not expect me to pronounce it, but it's Mike Michalowski or something like that. Okay. Um, broad brush, keep it simple. If you take 10% of everything that comes in and put it in a separate account, or five yeah. percent or ten percent whatever like that um there's more convoluted than that and about reducing costs and to balance it and how you can what you do every year and everything but if, if you if you skim off the top straight away yeah then you will make it work with what's beneath and then you create a pot as you go through which is going to be a, a reserve fund or a play fund or whatever it might be so in the business side on the personal side if you read the um what is it i call I shorten it to millionaire mindset the t harv ecker book um secrets of the millionaire mind and there's a whole, there's a, it's easy to get uh, 
free tickets or low cost tickets for the intensives they run in London when these sort of things are allowed to kick off again, which are essentially their op- their opportunity to flog you other stuff. But but it's actually really, uh, yeah, powerful powerful couple of days. But the um, the jar system and um, you separate your money into different sections. We have different accounts for serving different things. So it's similar to what you're talking about, and you you have. Uh, the, the bulk of it goes to pay the bills but you put money to one side for uh for having fun for saving for the future for saving for specific projects for giving for self-learning oh. and uh and you, you you separate them um so you have different accounts with different purposes and work in different ways so those those would be the two books i would recommend people have a, a look at and pull out what's what works for them or give it a go you know try stuff and make it work for you and, and that's what i've done i've set up different business accounts and different accounts yeah. that are for so we 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 we're, we're now ploughing into the the Christmas fund that we've uh, that me and my wife created uh, specifically to to pay for Christmas. Yes, yeah, that's right. We 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 a little bit. We create other ones. We did one create one for holidays, uh, one for annual costs because yep. every time it comes first, you know, Christmas and January, big bills come through the roof. All the presents, all the all the insurances, everything gets renewed on the first of January. So if you put money to one side, January's you know, a horrible yeah. month, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> no, one, no one's working with you, so income drops, <laughs> costs go up. Um, so you you put it away earlier on, and and it's, it's interesting. It's, one of the one of the uh, business accounts that I've set up actually has a, 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 a an ability to separate your your part of your money, like you're saying, like a pot into a tax pot. Mm, yes. Um, and and check those things out because there's some nice little 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 techniques that you can do with business accounts um, or being able to do that so that that's one of the accounts I've I've set up this tax uh, pot so 20% of everything that I'm earning will be uh, will be uh, put aside for for the tax return uh, corporation tax return later on down the line so um, yeah I I think I think that's a it's a good model it it sounds it's very similar to to what Ramit Sethi is which is essentially create these little pots that you can use for different things and but equally I, I, I would imagine that something like profit first or even the millionaire mindset you do need to give yourself a little fund for uh whether that's going out yeah, this is it. Now, you have the you have the play jar, as they call it, in the, the millionaire mindset. And the 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 rules with that are: is you put money to it throughout the month, and you have to spend it. Right. So if it's five percent <laughs> or ten percent of whatever you this comes in throughout the month or whatever it is, you have to spend it. Nothing left at the end. So we have a play day every week, every month, um, and um, where it's like no work, no whatever. Just let's just make sure that we're. Um, we're doing something if, we, if you know when the treats sort of concepts restricted now because we're in tier three and there's not much we can do um, but even if it's just playing video games or watching films or whatever it might be but so we're getting something nice in um but um but treat yourself that's the point you've got to treat yourself otherwise your inner child gets grumpy <laughs> and you start <laughs> resenting what you're doing and all this sort of stuff so yeah um, so what have you got planned for the future you're saying you've got another program uh, coming What's yeah it? uh well i'm restructuring the i've got so i've got this um find your purpose program which i want to really get working on next year targeting uh, people who who've been successful um but aren't feeling the buzz um i'm re shaping the breathing spaces to sort of be become more suitable for online because the the, con- the original concept was it was i had my six physical groups six different le- uh, themes and i could run that create that hub but then replicate that around the country and around the world so that it'd be a you know you for example if you wanted to you know you'd i'd, I'd work with you to set your own version up and and that sort of thing um it doesn't work quite the same way online so i'm just thinking about how to i've got some ideas i'm just going to flesh through that um uh, I also came up last month, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, uh, and I'm exploring where that goes. So what I, where, where business enjoyment wants to get to for me now um, is, in essence, it's essentially I want every, every business owner to know that they've got an option, that it doesn't have to be like that. It can be like this, where actually you feel safe you work with the right kind of people, you feel good about yourself and you're driven towards this sort of purpose that really gives you a sense of satisfaction and meaning and you can really, really enjoy what you do. And and I want to create a space where all the tools and resources are available for you to be able to get it if you want it. Right. And 
I have this vision now of a website, <laughs> but it doesn't look like a website. It looks like you're walking into Disney. <laughs> okay. Or Alton Towers or uh, yeah. um, Centre Parks or whatever it is. So it's a central hub kind of thing. And you point and click on things. So there will be a, uh, a bookstore and you can go in there and there's all the books that are recommended and attached to the books are going to be courses and stuff to make sure you can actually implement the stuff. Yeah. And it's going to be the cinema where there's going to be all the films that have been recommended and suggested. There's going to be... Um, uh, there's going to be the first aid thing where there's a problem you can go to you and the help I need help uh, there'll be the networking event I want to have networking events which are 3d so um, I don't just go on zoom and have 200 people I can actually see the cafe I can see two people talking to each other and I can click on them and say can I come in and, and say hello and then they invite you in and you join that open to and it sounds if, very if, much VR re related if you can get if you if, what was that very VR, but that's what I, the higher level. That's what I'd like, like the the ocular goggles or whatever. And you could actually do it in three D would be ideal. You'd need to have different levels depending. Um, and then and the whole thing essentially behind the back of it will have it would have to be filtered and um, curated, shall we say? But every other people could have their stuff in there as long as it fits in with the structure and fits in with the ethos and and whatever it is. And so it'll be driven through affiliations effectively. Right. Um, so it's it's me fronting it but everybody behind so you you might have a course on startups you and, and for startups coming in it's a it's a low entry price because startups need all the support they can get and there's gonna be some free stuff there's going to be a low cost course to get them up and running there's going to be a higher power course to get to the next level and when they get to a certain point they can move up membership to an established business and they get yeah. access to a few more yeah. things and then you know da, 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 that kind of thing but i want it to feel like you're going into this say park <laughs> with different roads and streets and you can have affiliation alley where you get introduced to all the networking events and the other things or it might be and come and have a look at bit and i like the stalls and whatever it might be and um but as long as there's some basic guidelines and ethos it's restricted so it's not overwhelming and there's ways of making sure you can get um really uh, vision out of it so that that's a longer term thing that's that's gonna be built over time um, but that's the idea of that. That's ambitious. Yeah, why not? Yeah, no, no, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. It's because my main um, thing, the main thing is I want the measure of success to change. At the yeah. moment, the measure of success is how much money you make. Yeah. And that's wrong. <laughs> it needs to be part of it, but it needs to incorporate. And in fact, in this space, I'm going to have, I'm going to create a stock market, which is going to be based on something different. Don't know what it is yet, and we're working on it. But we, you can actually, so it's to be depending on what you're doing for other people, what you're doing for people in the community, what you're doing for charity, will will have an influence on um, how your. I don't want to call it a ranking; it's not that kind of thing, but because I don't want it to be, got to be careful about that. Anyway, that's that's your <laughs> create a different stock market. I, and, and VR is definitely. Uh, I think I think B, VR has the potential to to disrupt in those sorts of environments and 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 and, and I, I think it's, it's as i say hugely ambitious i think it's it, it has a really good ethos and a really good um sort of thought behind how you can actually make that work and 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 i think it, it's it's where i always think vr and ar is is very good from a so so let's put it slightly differently i so just be just sorry just to uh, uh, to, to be total numpty vr virtual reality got that what's ar Actual ar reality. is augmented reality augmented. Ah, right. so it's sort of using your phone the, um, and using a, a, a pokemon go yeah yeah exactly exactly so, um as a, as a non-techie i need to ask these questions <laughs> um and and I think uh, I think it's a really good idea. The VR for me. So I I about well, it was probably about two or three years ago, went went to a, a place in Camden, and they had a VR studio. Uh, things what they described, and they had three or four different places where VR was hooked up, and various different games. Essentially, it was gaming uh, for VR. But um, <clears throat> and these sets were in set like you can get something like the, the the sort of cheaper side you can get things for 100 pounds 150 mm -hmm. pounds but these were like fully installed uh like thousand pound sets where you had the hand controls as well as and it was all linked to your shoulder so your movement etc and it was really interesting and really good and it was it was the fascinating thing was the games were fun some of them were quite basic looking but there was there was that 
all the things with video games is if there's an essence of fun or enjoyment at what you're doing it, yeah. you don't necessarily need the most up-to-date graphics to be have a very enjoyable game but what one of the people found uh, one of my colleagues found um heart surgery or whatever it was there was an operation and actually vr i think can be very very useful for for doctors or training doctors to 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 cut a gallbladder or whatever it would heart operation whatever it is um and so I think there is a space of VR. I, I, I don't think we've kind of re- defined where VR is going to fit in okay. the next 10 years or, or 20 years. Um, huge steps forward have been made. Facebook have just bought Oculus and, or bought them about two years ago. And they're, they're, they're putting quite a bit of money in there. Um, but I actually think there's a practical solution to VR as well. And, and some of the stuff you were sort of saying, like the whole idea is that uh, I, I really thought it was quite fun that you could have a, 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 a board meeting in a Parisian cafe and you've all got your different sets. One's in London, one's in, in Berlin, one's in America, whatever. And you've all got these VR sets and you're sitting in a, in a Parisian cafe talking about your board meeting. Yeah. And I think that's quite fun. That could, that could be quite a, a useful or enjoyable uh, tool. Um, Cause you've got all the other end. You've got the, the end of ready player one where uh, you end up. Have you seen ready player one, the film? I've not seen it. I'm aware of it. I'm not, I've seen the trailers, but I'm not. Watch it. If you're even fascinated by a little bit on VR, go and watch it. It's, it, it's brilliant. It's a Steven Spielberg film. It's, yeah, yeah. it's an amazing film. Um, but you've got that extreme where you're basically immersed yourself in, in VR and, and you're living your life in VR rather than the real world. Um, and I don't think we'll we'll we get into that. We're, there's no indication we're actually getting towards that at the moment. I think you know, I think that they will come because again, the, the you watch uh, a lot of these sort of fantasy science fiction films of the past and the stuff that comes comes through. I mean, the the, the cliche is that you look at Star Trek and we've now got all of the the the, yeah. the, the, the communication tools. We haven't got the we can't beam people up yet or anything like that. But the, yeah. these things come through and and. Um, I'm thinking of now. You look at the Avengers films, where they will have the holograms of the people that are in other space. They will, they have born meetings, yeah, with people yep. in different spaces. Um, Angel, I remember watching Angel and Buffy, and then they had them in that. Um, I think it was, and you know, so the, the visions there. So when people make it happen, bottom line, yeah, as yeah. technology improves, yeah. Um, but the thing is, is what normally happens is, and well, you'll you, you tell me, but my perception of it is is as you go in with an intent and you can create the thing that you want to create, but then something comes off of it you never thought was ever going to happen. And when you say um, people don't know what what to do with it yet, it's because that thing hasn't found us yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It will come. It's, the, it, it's, it's like Alexa as well. Um, uh, there, there, is, there is a B2C market for, uh, for, for Amazon Alexa, but there's no B2B market at the moment. Mm. But... But there, there are people that are working on that, trying to work out how the best way to use that technology um, in a business setting and, and sort of uh, less, maybe you, you you still have your laptops, but it's all enabled. And and, and you, you so, yeah, technology I, is is always moving forward and it's moving forward faster and faster. And, and these these things that might have taken 10, 15 years are now taking a year, 18 months to, to really keep going so I, I would say yeah that's is one of the reasons i'm fascinated by technology is the fact the pace of change we've got at the moment in technology is just um is massive and uh, uh you, you you need to like what was it a 1984 when uh, steve jobs created the mac the macintosh and had that the had the advert for uh, the 1984 that it would all be controlled uh, by computers and 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 we we would never have thought 20 30 years ago that every everyone would be sitting with a laptop in front of them mm. virtually everyone has a laptop or a desktop at home so um yeah technology is 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 is, is, is an incredible uh tool um well i'm coming to i think you're gone you well I, I was just gonna ask, refer that question back to you what your vision is so my vision um Mine's a little bit more immediate. Um, I, I've I've got a couple of 
early stage businesses. So as I was talking about the podcast agency, I, I've made a commitment with my business partner that for um, for six months, I will be the sort of operations manager, the account manager of that business. So when we get clients, I will, I will either be me or someone working below me that will be managing those engagements. So it's not where I want to be long term. It, it's very much a job within a business. But we, we both made commitments. He's made a commitment to get the clients in, get the leads generated in the sales side. And I've sort of taken the account management side. So I would like in six months time to have a successful business that I could outsource or 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 or, or delegate to, to, to somebody. It's not something I'm passionate about it, but it's not like I need to do this. It's very much a business a business decision. So I want to set that up and, and get that up and running. Um, the property business for me is very important. I, I've got I've got to buy some more properties. I've got to extend that <clears throat> from a financial point of view as well as a, um, something I want to do. Um, and, and for me, it's just putting a lot of effort into getting the coaching business to a stage where it would be nice to have too many clients and I have to start setting up online content, like webinars and sort of um, recordings of things because the, the so, so it's probably mainly focused on those three to get those established and, and more sustainable financially. Um, Cause I'm still relatively early doors. I, I've been doing entrepreneurial stuff. I've, I've run a podcast course for a year, maybe even a little bit longer where I, I teach people how to, to start podcasts um and uh yeah i've kind of split split my time into five things one is podcasting one is podcast course one is coaching one is property and one is this podcast agency and i'm not taking anything else on i'm no, very that's fair enough <laughs> yeah it's, it's a lot of things even to for for one person but it's like someone messaged me um on linkedin saying we've got a we've got an event next summer that hopefully will be going ahead. Would you would you showcase your business businesses and turn up and 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 talk to people and maybe do a presentation? And I had to turn it down. Not necessarily that it wouldn't be a good um, advertising portal, but mainly because um, I just don't have the time to prepare for it. And 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 I and I don't like doing things half assed I'd like to actually do them properly. So I actually turned that down quite recently. And and. Uh, a, a couple of people are, are telling me I need to write a book as well. I've never written a book. Um, so I'm, I'm being... Don't write a book because you need to write a book, work out why you want to write a book. Well, exactly. This is the thing. And, and and I'm thinking about using my podcast, my podcasts, interviews. I've probably done 80 interviews now, 70 or 80 interviews. And, and maybe I'm sort of every so often brainstorming how I could get themes out of the podcast, which I could write the book about. So yeah, who's um, it for and what do you want it to do? Exactly. I'm not, that's, I'm not, I'm not quite demand that, but that's what you want to, well, you need to write a book. Great. Why? Exactly. <laughs> it's got to be for a purpose. It's got to be yeah, for yeah. a purpose yeah. to, to actually achieve. Um, um, right. One last thing. Um, I think we're coming to the end of our time. I, I need to, to, to duck out soon, but I ask six questions. Ooh to every person that I have on my podcast. And I want to do it with you, if you don't mind. Okay, well, as long as I can ask you one question back. Absolutely. Do you want to do your question first? Uh, no, no, you go first. Okay, so six six quick fire questions uh, that I want to ask you. What's the best piece of advice that you've been given? That I've been given? Yes. Oh, blimey. I'm, I'm useless at that because I never know where the information comes from. <laughs> <laughs> I forget. It just sort of melds into each other. Um, advice i've been given if you, I'm, I'm now trying to think of a specific thing i've been given rather than what my biggest learning is because i don't know where it would have come from so it depends what you want to get from it but um well, what's your biggest learning because the, the, the ultimately it will come down to the fact that really none of it all matters <laughs> So what does matter is go and have fun. Right. Awesome. Or you or, or you and you and you make it matter. That's the thing, you know. What's the best decision you made? 
Oh, leaving KPMG. <laughs> no offense to KPMG. That's it. Was nothing about the company, nothing about the people. I was just in the wrong place. Right. Uh, who's helped you most in your career? I'm going to be really, really sad, and it's and it's it's a it's a problem of mine, but me. Okay. Part of my problem throughout, and we didn't go into my sort of child world. I can get I'm totally, I know exactly why and all the rest of it, but I've relied on myself too much. Right. And not relied on people. I've 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 had coaches and I've had support and and that kind of thing. So um, but it's always come back down to me grasping things and doing stuff, and that's something I'm working to reverse. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any regrets? No, never. Cool. What are you most proud of? do a whole subject just on that but uh <laughs> and and get all sort of philosophical if it, to, to, to answer the question um uh, and be specific i will still say that probably my first book is probably the proudest which was the one focused on helping people deal with insolvency um interviews with people um that have been through it bringing my own experiences in and, and at every single stage of everything going wrong um how to reconcile the mindset and some specific actions you can do and whilst I've never had interaction with a specific person's uh, involved, I have been told that it saved someone's life. Oh, amazing. So, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> you can't, you can't, can't do much more. Yeah. Like, can <laughs> um, what does legacy mean to you? Starting something for all the right reasons that means something to other people as well and continues without you awesome and then the last question is where, where can people find you so yeah uh best thing to do is just uh <laughs> businessenjoyment.com is my website uh if you can't remember the website just type business enjoyment on into google it will come up and um yeah, contact details on there. You can download a free copy of my latest book, More Than Just Money. There's a link to my podcast on there. And um, obviously I'm on LinkedIn as well if people need to get me on there. But um, yeah, just business enjoyment. Okay, awesome. Right, what's your question? My question for you, sir, is what makes your bits tingle? Um, I think variety... So as I said, I, I've got five things that I'm, I'm working on. And and to be honest, there could be another two or three that uh, the ideas are not necessarily the problem. It's it's having enough time to execute, which is which is what I'm trying to prioritize at the moment. So um, startups, young businesses, helping people uh, build a business is incredibly rewarding. Um, and so for me, um, working with people to to get their businesses up and running and making them sustainable and successful is is gets me excited gets me up every day um it, it i just think it's it's the early stage business is such a it's such a minefield and it's such a concern for people because most people just never do it and they might even have a very good idea and they just don't do it. So what I'm trying to enable people to do is to, to set that up, even if it's just a side hustle, nothing wrong with that. Bring in, bring in extra income. You can automate it or delegate it and you can have a successful, sustainable business while you do maybe a job that you like or, 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 or enjoy sections of it. So for me at the moment, and this is why setting up my own businesses have been so rewarding is that, I really get a buzz out of brainstorming and working things out that it, it, it's interesting because in, in, in big four, and I will get to the point, but in big four, there were so many um, well-trodden paths that you can do, whether you're doing a report, whether you're doing a, um, a, a, an implementation of software whether you're doing a tax return whatever it is there are well-trodden paths to how you do things and don't get me wrong what i've tried to do is systemize it and, and bring in a, a structure of how to set up a business but every business needs something different than the other business 
So what gets me excited is sitting there talking to people and or even on my own business is working them out, working out those things that ha- don't actually have a well trodden path. And you need to work out what that well trodden path is for. So that for me is really exciting, is really interesting and, and gets me tingling, uh, to use your words, because you're creating something it has been done before and market research gives you a great balance of understanding, but essentially brainstorming and coming up with ideas that, that are not well trodden paths is really exciting for me. Mm, brilliant. And a uh, corollary question, where can people find you? Yeah. So um, website, um, absolute business mindset.com. Um, that's got now links to the coaching, to the podcast course, to the podcasts, um, you can basically find most things. Um, podcastintroduction.com is the podcast agency, if anyone's interested uh, to jump on that. Um, or LinkedIn. LinkedIn's probably the best place for me, Mark Hayward, um, on LinkedIn. If anyone wants to direct message me, by all means, um, connect and, 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 and strike up a conversation. If you're interested in the coaching or the business side, um, or if you just want, I'm, I'm regularly posting on LinkedIn now, uh, sort of a tr- thought leader sounds far too grand, but essentially I think I can add some value with my experiences and my knowledge to, to help people. So there, there's, there's pretty much good content on LinkedIn on there as well. Brilliant. Well, uh, thank you very much, Mark. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yes, it's been brilliant. Thank you so much. I, 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 I think it's worked well. I think, yeah. I think it's worked well. And this is it. It, it. Whether it works or not, we're giving it a go and we try it. Absolutely. Uh, it's an experiment. We give it a go. I think it's good. Um, the audience will dictate. <laughs> 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 oh, it's just two people chatting. <laughs> but, you know, it's all about. It's about connection, isn't it? Absolutely. All right, Andrew. Thank you so much. I will uh, catch up with you soon. Thanks a lot. Cheers.